welcome everyone, and we're got a, we've got a great lineup this evening. We're going to be addressing the issues and the uh, threats that are happening out in the Biona and this whole area due to SoCal gas, underground gas storage operations. So first of all, I'd like to welcome uh, two representatives from uh, Supervisor Hans office. We have Jennifer Lamarck and Jenny Eubanks here with us. They're in the back of the room, so thanks so much for showing up. Uh, so we have two speakers here this evening, and they have between them about 70 years of experience. They have been involved, deeply involved, in what's been going on in this area with the underground gas storage operations. We have with us Patricia McPherson from Grassroots Coalition, and we also have Tom Williams from Citizens Coalition for a Safe Community. Uh, Tom is a gas and oil expert and has been in working in this field for a long, long time. And Patricia will be taking us on a uh, journey through the historical incidents leading up to current times about what's been going on with SoCal Gas, underground gas storage operations. Uh, Grassroots Coalition and Patricia McPherson, but also the Sierra Club's involvement in the oil and gas issues goes back um, 20 years as well. Um, I'm sorry, I'm looking at you because I was just out with her husband last night getting FLIR images off of Biona, uh, the marsh area, right in here. So expect to see those images of what's called University City Syndicate, an oil well that's leaking right here. Um, and it's been leaking there for years. It's by Vista that has the well. They are the operator of it. And it leaked right after. And uh, Dogger let them put a few bags of cement on top. And no, uh, no mystery there. It just started to leak again. And it's been leaking since. And one of the first things we ever had to do <coughs> was to fight to determine that these gases are oil field gases. I mean, forget the Playa Vista site. Let's talk about this whole region. I'm calling it, especially SoCal gas, that these are swamp gases, biogenic <laughs> gases. Well, we're going to go on a tour to see how they are not biogenic gases. They are all thermogenic gases through here. I've personally gone and sampled up in the lagoon area, which if you look at the end of Biota Lagoon, uh, there's a Curtis well there on that little island, if any of you are familiar with that neck of the woods, and there's a picture of the lagoon. Um, it leaks every day. It's constantly leaking. There are leaks all through here. I have an arrow there. We, I've got uh, isotopic analysis that I've done in this area, and this area, and this area, and this area. And I have documentation for so many of these other areas. There are just too many arrows to draw with all of the thermogenic gas and oil field gases that are leaking out of this area. And in 2007, the CPUC um, did a uh, study. We, we had a litigation with SoCal Gas and Grassroots Coalition through the California Public Utilities Commission system. And in the report that they did as part of that litigation, they found that there was a greater than 50% chance that the gases leaking this far east were reservoir gases from Biovista. Um, and this just goes on to tell you that uh, this area was shut down, <coughs> gas operations were shut down in 2010 with Dodger Order 1008 due to reservoir gas leakage in this area. Reservoir gas leakage in this area. Delray 10 has been a constant leaker. This is butts right up to apartments and condos right there. Um, and all of these wells right through the Delray 18 is a constant leaker. There are other wells throughout here that are always leaking over and over and over again. Okay. SoCal Gas took over these operations. They got a, a conditional use permit from the city of Los Angeles. Condition number 17, the underground gas pressure shall be kept sufficiently low so that there will be no escape of gases into the air above, above the ground. Well, that didn't work out. Um, we have gases surfacing all over. And as a matter of fact, when uh, the government, when they first put this in in the 30s, they kept the pressures at about 700. 
And they know from studies that were done and that if they got above 700 PSI, pounds per square inch, the gases would leak. And they would leak out into the east, to the north, as this picture here, um, going back to slide one, it leaked all through the areas surrounding the, uh, the operations. And when SoCal Gas took over, in order to make more money, they upped the pressures and the volumes of gas inside to 1,700 pounds per square inch, so the gas is migrating even further. Did they tell the city of Los Angeles this? No. Did they talk to Dogger about this? No. And at the time, they were approved for 240 acres only to store their gas. The conditional use grant does not waive the necessity of other required permits or licenses. The grant does not waive the necessity of other required permits or licenses. Um, no approval was ever given by the CPUC to expand their operations. They're required to get approval to expand the operations through the CPUC, through Dogger. That was never done. So, it is subject to revocation. The conditional use permit for the city of Los Angeles. Here is the original 240 acres right here. And here's Bionic Channel way up here. This is a map showing just the migration to the north that goes up into the Venice and Marina del Rey area. And when they upped the pressures, they just started escaping up there. But they knew, even here in 1955, they asked for additional space. SoCal asked for additional space. Funny they didn't ask for additional space underground, but it's the same thing. They needed to ask for that expansion, and they never did. They've gone way beyond the boundaries of proof. This is a PRA, Public Record Act request, that we put in, I forget what year, 2004 or so, um, to uh, the, the Department of Conservation Division of Oil and Gas. There is no record of any project expansion proposal, so there are no documents responsive to your request. You know? <laughs> 1986, no project approval by Dogger, only individual well permits. This is, happens to be a letter that Dogger also looked into this a little bit in 1986 and said, where's your approval for any of the expansions? Well, as it turns out, what they did was they said, continue with your operations with the approvals on the individual permits that we've given you, but there's never been an actual approval for the expansion of the operations of SoCal Gas letting this gas migrate to the north. Um, and this one, from them is another condition that says if things are altered significantly, they have to get an approval. Well, it still has not happened. And when you think about who owns the mineral rights up in the Venice area, some of it, some of it is owned by people that still have homes there. This happens to be just a thing that was done in uh, when they first started the, the field. Um, it's uh, Chicago wrote and said that it would be considered a class four operation in Chicago and they wouldn't allow it in an in a urban setting because it was too hazardous. So the city of Chicago warned the city of LA um, and actually this was the Hersher field that they were talking about which Chicago did have but it was set in a rural setting okay. and it too leaked and leaked into water wells despite the low pressure operations they had there. Here's 1993 when we asked at the Sierra Club what's the uh, area of their uh, operations and again this is this small little area down here the channel is up here so it's basically like this the only problem is that was not true. They knew it had already expanded everywhere. And here's our settlement, one of the discussions that uh, a document applied, our SoCal Gas put out. And if you see this blue line, this is their sphere of influence that they talk about in 2008. So look at the difference between that, this, and this. And is this correct? God knows. How would we know? <laughs> No one's checking, no one's looking. Is that they have. This is called the main area where they have their storage. This is called the flats, it's also called the wetlands area. This is one of the SCG's old maps, which is 
kind of fun. This is called the town lot area or the town site area. And there may be a lot of people who live there. And this is called the gas cap area on the other side of, here's the marina channel going in here. This is over in the marina, gas cap area. Here's what we have underneath. We have aquifers, freshwater aquifers underlying the whole area out to the ocean. And Silverado, which is LA's major drinking water aquifer, is at the very base. And here's just a diagram showing the oil field gases coming out. And what's known as the 50 foot gravel up here is an old LA riverbed that is bouldered. So it acts as a, an easy conduit for all the gases to expand outward. So we have all of this expanding outward in conduits for gas. And they, they were calling it uh, biogenic gas. We worked with the Building and Safety Department in Los Angeles. And they brought in exploration technologies out of Texas because they chose a company that was outside of California to try and get away from conflict of interest. Exploration technologies came in and read, this is the EIR for Playa Vista, right? This is Division of Oil and Gas and Geothermal Resources in 1993, yeah. talking about the Fairfax Ross Dress for Less Explosion. Um, they said the fires were from decomposing organic mass. Mm. This line. And they also said regarding the Playa Vista site, mm. there are no shallow zones or pockets of gas that can seep to the surface of Playa Vista. <laughs> <laughs> That's 1993. And we already know from 1985 we have documents with, with dogger records knowing that these gases are escaping and migrating to the north and to the east. They know that it's um, coming to the surface. I'll show you those in a minute. But here is exploration uh, technologies verifying that it's the thermogenic gas that is coming up through the soils and the water because it contains ethane, butane, BTEX chemicals that they diagnosed that cryogenic gases don't have. So, the presence of ethane, propane, and butanes confirm the presence of thermogenic gas in the water wells also. So it's in the aquifers. Here we have ETI stating that SoCal gas knows that it's a common occurrence that their well casings act as conduits for gas to vent to the surface. But they're not, that's not legal. They're not allowed to let that happen. He also said, there's no question there's justification for conducting an investigation for casing leakage associated with the gas storage field. Now doesn't that sound like the current CCST report that says because of all the leakage and lack of containment that there needs to be a, a full-on study of all of SoCal Gas's operations? Well, this is ETI back in 2001. And ETI put forward a list of questions to SoCal Gas which SoCal Gas did not answer, did not participate because they said it was too onerous a list. From the Regal study that was done in 1953 of all of the gas migration, this isn't a no-brainer. SoCal Gas isn't going to deny the fact that their gases are migrating. But SoCal Gas didn't acknowledge this to the city of LA until 1993. Not until 1993. I mean, think about it. 1985 or was it 86? that Dogger didn't have any kind of, was asking where's your approval for any of your operations. So we've got years and decades going by that SoCal Gas is operating out there with no one paying attention to them. There's a woman that was uh, sued for uh, personal injuries, health injuries, that lives right next to it up on the bluff. And it, uh, the judge in that case said for the past 55 years, neither Division of Oil and Gas or the PUC have been paying any attention to contamination through the soils or the waters. Oh. But SoCal Gas also fails to tell the city that no expansion uh, approvals were ever requested or garnered. And SoCal Gas failed to tell the city of LA in that conditional use permit that the migration was occurring due to SCG's decision to increase the gas pressure and the injection volumes. So gas migration to the surface. Uh, there are at least five different possible sources of gas to the surface at Playa del Rey. This is the Lorio report, which I have the, uh, if you want to look at the casings, or the well leakage diagrams back there. 
The weld leakage diagrams that I have back there show casing leaks, casing shoe leaks, leaks from lower to upper zones. Who is it that said there are no zones in Playa del Rey? And yet here is SCG's own engineer discussing this specifically about the Playa del Rey site. These are other ways that it get leaks. And this talks about different uh, sections and areas of the SoCal gas Playa del Rey field itself. They have different areas where they have, and, and this also talks about uh, leaks to the surface, even in this document. This is, this is an 85 document. Also, they knew. Next. Um, this is something that my mentor, Bernard Andrews, who's a uh, gas migration expert, um, he put together this uh, summary of statements made that have been constantly made by SoCal Gas, which is there is no vertical gas migration, um, there is very little benzene, if any at all, in their gas stream. Next slide. We'll go on to this. Here is a report done by SoCal Gas showing levels of, and by the way, they said 40 parts per million or less. And this is 139, 137, 236. So we're not telling the truth here. And yet their top level people are saying some natural gas contains no benzene. And the most benzene we normally find is 40 parts per million. Ooh. Next slide. All right, here we go into helium. This is a document from SoCal Gas, again, 1975. Um, we have multiple wells, 26 wells, helium's present. Helium's a marker that SoCal Gas uses to show that it's their gas. The field doesn't have helium in it. It was brought in with the gas that was piped in from Texas and Oklahoma and other areas. So when they find it, the game they like to play is that, well, it's too high, it's too low, it's not ours. Surface casing, in a casing of 26 wells. This document talks about reservoir gas surfacing in the flats, the bluffs, and north of Iona Channel at Delray 17. This is 1975, and yet they tell the city of LA this isn't happening. Next slide. And we have here somebody that is concerned. Are we there as good neighbors preventing water encroachment, pressure buildup in the old town lot field? Or are we, in fact, remedying a problem of our own creation, pressure buildup due to gas migration? This is talking about in the Venice area and in the marina area. These guys know this. This is an old a 1980 document. OK, and this is talking about Delray 18, which is also in the uh, uh, closer to the Biona area, but the shoe leakage, the shoe leakage that comes to the surface, they knew all of this surfacing. Next slide, that's okay. Here we have helium level over here. It says Delray 10, Delray 10, which this one was abandoned. But you know what? It's also inside all those condominiums. Who's checking it now? These are, and this is, I could go on and on and on, with pages in different years of this happening. This says um, bar hole, bar hole, bar hole. Bar holes are things that they put in the ground and they test away from the wellhead itself. This is all helium and, and the gases of their reservoir gases that they're finding coming up around Delray 10. Next slide. This is a whole list of wells that they have. Next slide. Leaking and leaking to the surface. Um, here's another document that says, uh, Oh, this is actually the start of a legal document because they're trying to figure out if we allow this to reflood, which it's now at about 2,400, and we don't know if it's gone even beyond that in the uh, Venice area, that we will call it naturally occurring phenomenon, that the water is just reflooding. <laughs> but when the water refloods into an area, what does it do to all that gas that's stuck in there? It's going to push it up through any orifice it can. And this whole document, go to the next one, um, and the next one, that's the casing lease and stuff. And this is, by the way, again, here's Delray 10. This is what shut down the field in 2010, was uh, leakage that they know is reservoir gas, which didn't make the news any more than RGC did for a while. Um, next slide, please. Um, uh, oh, this is the liabilities for the Troxel well, also. Troxel is a well that I just talked to a guy next door to it. He was totally unaware that SoCal Gas had any storage operations directly underneath them. But 
They are going to say any possible hydrocarbons or water escaping its surface locations will occur solely through wells that are not properly abandoned. Well, and they're going to say those aren't our wells. <laughs> so, what are they doing? They're shifting the liability. They're trying to shift the liability to the homeowner who is a, a neophyte. They know nothing of what they're buying into. SoCal Gas doesn't tell you uh, this information when you're buying into a home. They tell you you've got an abandoned well and one thinks that it's going to last forever when in fact they leak and they leak over and over and over again and we have a slew of documents that show it happening. Next slide. The public needs to know if SoCal Gas implemented the strategy in this legal memo which is talking about investigate abandoned well histories in the townside Troxel Delray area. It also talks about monitoring in the groundwater, things that we asked for in our settlement agreement. Lorio, uh, their engineer, recommends having all of this kind of monitoring done. Well, they agreed to it in our settlement agreement, but it hasn't been enforced by the Public Utilities Commission. Okay, I think I'm done. This is more of the same. It's just that how hazardous is too hazardous. People need to know, and we need to be able to ask these questions and get these answers. see the depth of knowledge and experience that Patricia has at the tip of her tongue. She is a wealth of information. I've seen her speak uh, before the Coastal Commission, the Water Board, and she's so impressive with her ability to encapsulate what the situation is, what the dangers are, where the uh, issues are. So, big hand to her. And questions about this segment, please let us know what those questions are. We'll put them up here on our board and we'll be able to address them at the end. Ben. I worked for Shell uh, years ago and I'm not current. The, the question I have uh, for, I think, Patricia, for sure, is the, high, the helium monitoring and the comparison of data. Uh, um, do they have data that shows the level of helium in the gas that they're first, uh, purchasing to push down for storage relative to that which they're taking out. I have a, I did, I'm a little confused because helium was very important here um, as evidentiary for the leaks. And if there's data for the purchase uh, of the gas from various places that uh, this is being used to store, and they're betting that when they buy gas and store it here, they're going to be able to store it and sell it at a higher price. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Anyone else? Any other questions? Eric? Two little ones. Uh, was there a blowout of well 10 in uh, March 25th, 1956? <laughs> wow. Probably. And, and my second question is, the gas that's down there that comes from Texas, is it the product of fracking and does it have frack chemicals carried in it? Okay, thank you. I think I'll be able to read this. Okay, anyone else? Marsha. Um, about five to ten years ago, there was a some kind of major reabandonment or something of Delray 10, which I believe Patricia showed was at Mariner's Village. I mean, we saw it happening at Mariner's Village, and I just wondered if she knew what exactly they did, because they were very, the last county supervisor was very uh, evasive about what it was. They can't see it. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, is there a per capita operation here? Yes. Can you repeat that? What was the question? Is there a per capita operation? Eoderizer. Yeah. Yes. 
In the back? Two questions. Do you think that the overpressurization of the system contributed to the wealth failure in Greenville recently that recently got capped? And question number two would be, I read an article that said Scatterbin is powered primarily by this uh, gas field and that it is going to be decommissioned. And when that happens, is this field also, is the, is the lease going to cease? And are they going to be required to restore that area with clean, fresh water where they're currently storing gas? All okay. Water. Thank you. One more. Yeah. Cease and desist. Can we do anything about that in the legal point of view? Uh, to find out uh, what, to show them what we know, to stop them until they can answer those questions. Okay. Okay, great, thank you. So, thank you for those questions. So, next on board is Tom. Tom Williams will take it from here. I'm Dr. Tom Williams. I work with a company, uh, with an organization called Citizens Coalition for a Safe Community. Over 10 years of operating in the Inglewood oil field because they had two big blowouts and had to evacuate people, and that got the county supervisors attention. So, uh, We've gone over most of the evidence, the catastrophe. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Back there? Yes. You can hear them, okay? And if you can't, I can speak a lot louder. <laughs> so, we got fueling catastrophe. And my goodness, excellent. We'll go through this one We have a catastrophe. Anyone ever heard of Porter Ranch? Of course. Porter Ranch. Anyone ever heard of Olive Street in downtown LA? How about the Alenco site? Alenco. Allen Co. or Good Shepherd. Or the one next to USC, which they now closed down. So, my interest is how to avoid the catastrophe that may be coming. So, next one. Okay, we can start with actions now because we have a very favorable environment politically, economically, and a few others. So you have a lot of people that are in the same position as you. And it's a question now as to what to do with that. Is there another? I, I do. You uh, can put your Here. Here. Okay. Uh, tonight, Relax and just get the impression. All the details are inside. It's really what you're going to do based upon Playa del Rey and you're in the city of Los Angeles. Important right now. Excellent. Oh, here's a question before any answers. Anyone here on a neighborhood council director? Anyone ever attend at the neighborhood council? Palisades, does the Palisades count? Action? Okay. We had, as Patricia noted, there are a whole bunch of state, county, city agencies involved in this mess. I call them the lumps. <laughs> because they sit there and basically just process paper, except for now. Because now we have the first time occupied position of 
the Oil and Gas Administrator for the City of Los Angeles in the Office of Oil and Gas Administration in the Board of Public Works, official city position for somebody dealing with oil and gas. First time in about 20 years. He's been there for about two years, three years, but he's our chance. And it's the city that we have to worry about. These people here, forget it. There's just a lot of stuff that's gone on. Inglewood Oil Field, Lisio Canyon, Porter Ranch, Blanco, and this guy, the oil and gas administrator, he has basically shut down the Elenco site and he has required a major modification of what is called the Jefferson site. So we have a chance. <laughs> Next slide. Uh, the history of all of the failures of the oil and gas industry is long. Has anyone ever been to the Page Museum? <laughs> Did you go out and look at the oil and gas? <laughs> the gas is boiling up. Yeah. Hey, there are faults. So how do you have to prove that oil and gas are coming up? When we had the Ross Press for Less explosion, I was there for 72 hours straight time. They allowed me to sleep on the bus ditch. Why? Because they had gas blowing up. It wasn't the gas company's gas, though. <laughs> It was overpressurizing of the oil reservoirs. And 22 people went to the hospital. Next one. Okay, what is a well? It's a, it's a hole in the ground through which you produce oil gas. How is it safe? It ain't. In 1958, I spent two months on an oil rig in eastern Kansas and decided to go to college. So, thank God I did. Because number of digits on hands is a good indicator of my safe safety. And if they're not willing to be safe on the rig, it's difficult to be safe from after you pull the rig off. So, there are several types of wells. The most important well is what now is being called the orphan well. Orphan. That is, nobody claims responsibility for it, nobody gets paid for it, nobody wants to touch it because if you touch an orphan well, basically you're committing a million dollars of your money to fixing it. A million dollars of a well. So in Montebello, the CPUC shut down the gas storage facility there because they had had 15 houses bought by the gas company with ratepayers' expenses because buying a house at 150 dollars to 250000 is a lot cheaper than redoing the well at a million, million plus. So it's all in economics, but the important word there is the orphan well. Next slide. You have basically three different casings in a well. Each one of them provides gas and or oil up. And each one is supposed to be contained. There's supposed to be a tubing in the middle of it for many wells, but nobody uses that because it's too expensive to maintain <laughs> and it slows down the injection and the production from the well. Excellent. Okay. We're in. Well, in the state of California, most of your oil and gas is from around 2,000 to 8,000 feet below us. Below that, the gas company loves to have gas storage and eventually carbon dioxide sequestration would be down there. You want to get it as deep and out of the way as possible. So, uh, question is, going through all this property, one of the th differences is, you ever heard of land grants? <laughs> the Mexican and the Spanish government, the Mexican government granted land to various entities, including the surface and all mineral rights in those. 
Those were accepted by the U.S. government when we acquired California. So, I might say they learned very quickly that oil in the 1890s to 1920 was a valuable product. It was everywhere. So, who owns it? You got a whole bunch of different categories, but it's basically you don't have to own the subsurface in order to own the surface. And the important thing there is this guy here, LA County Assessor. I guarantee the LA County Assessor knows everything. <laughs> who leases, who owns, who rents, who leases out, who buys the lease, and various things like that. Why? Because what? You ever heard of oil depletion allowance? Um, Some people have. Yeah. Because it's a taxable thing. And I once was refused entry to a county assessor's meeting up in Santa Barbara in conjunction with an oil and gas conference that was going on. Outsiders were not allowed. Why? <laughs> Money! <laughs> yes. Here, here's the patchwork under us right now. There's a whole bunch of different types of ownership. SoCal Gas owns some subsurface properties, so they lease some surface, some subsurface properties, and might say the only people that really know is either the county assessor or what Patricia called Docker. Division of Oil, Gas, and Geothermal Resources, Division of the Department of Conservation, a state agency. Uh, next slide. <laughs> and when you talk about pathways, in the Metro Rail Red Line Phase 1, we had to bore a tunnel through an oil field. We had magnetometers going out in front of the tunnel just to make sure we could find steel casings. At, has anyone been to the Wilshire Courtyard on Fairfax? Mm -hmm. Don't. <laughs> because Parsons Corporation, my former employer, we designed the membrane that went into there in order to protect it from gas. But one Saturday when nobody was working, we videotaped the whole thing. It was passing gas from the liner into the excavation. But then I heard boo 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 Went over to the side. And here were 55 gallon drums casing that had been cut through by the excavator. Here was a power pole that was stuck into the 55 gallon drums. And here was a piece of big piece of leather showing that in the old days, how we <coughs> abandoned wells. You <laughs> suck everything out, you pull all the steel out, you, do as much as you can, you dump all the gravel you have down the hole, and then you put a plug in it. A plug, power pole, and leather in order to seal it off. It's in the east side of the Wilshire Courtyard Foundation. Wow. But, but you can see here, and basically the surface property owners, that is 50 foot wide by 150 foot deep, maybe, each one of them had a well. And if you're at Alvarado in Wilshire, every house had a well. Because I might say the subsurface property ownership had not been clarified. So you have these things, leaks. Every one of these can leak. Next slide. How do you get it? Put gas in and out. You have to inject it in, and then you withdraw it. And my say gas company has these. But there are a lot of wells along here. And eventually, if you pressurize here, it sends out a wave of pressure <coughs> in the surrounding zones. Next slide. So my say if you have any of these around, you may have a problem. Next slide. So in uh, current oil production, they have what is called enhanced oil recovery. That means you pump oil 
or you pump water and or gas into the ground, it pushes the oil over and you produce it out of the well. This is the most common practice in all of downtown LA, South Central, the Lysian Park area. All of these use the same basic thing. You pump something in here and it pushes oil over here and you pull it out there. Next. Okay. Uh, what, do we, what actions do we need to take? And my saying, I always include it versus them. Because in Lysio Canyon, we had, had a phrase, shut it down. I said, but there are so many of them. It's not it, it's them. So we changed it to shut them down. So, What's the evidence? We've had Ross Store, we had Montebello Gas Field, we had Olive Street blowout, which evacuated 30 some odd people out of an apartment when oil was boiling up in an Olive Street, downtown LA. Uh, we've had the Englewood blowouts, which CCESC helped with, and we sued. There are several things going on right now. Uh, basically, the smaller production sites, that is 20 to 40 to 60 wells on a two acre plot <coughs> are being regulated. Quiet. Next slide. Uh, we have a lot of evidence and area oil fields. We have a lot of oil fields in the city of LA. <laughs> okay, what has been done for them? Well, methane rules. Why didn't we have methane rules? That was because of the raw stress for less store blowout and 22 people in the uh, hospital. We have the Community <coughs> Standards District for the Inglewood oil field, which has been functioning for 10 years. We've had a lot of things. Gas company, usually, they just accuse others and keep it quiet and say, we're working on it, we're working on it, we're working on it, we're working on it. We're working. <laughs> Next slide. So, uh, what to do about it? Main thing is make sure you're being informed. Yes. Then, hey, start dealing with the city government. And my say, like, let's go to the next slide. Major one, uh, next slide. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, you want to talk about wells? Do you, do you know anybody that lives at any of these addresses here in Marina del Rey? Tell them they have a well. Wow. And that's an orphan well. Nobody is claims yeah. responsibility. Wow. These four are ones that are knowingly still there, never been abandoned. So if you know anybody there, maybe they have interest in it. So where is your well? Where is the pad? Where is the field? Down below us, there's one well that was abandoned out this way from this building wow. here. So they were everywhere. Next. Uh, and we need to have an organization through the city to basically close down these well fields in the city of Los Angeles. Only in the city of Los Angeles. Yep. And next one. Okay, uh, we have what is called a specific plan, and the oil and gas administrator of the city of Los Angeles is pushing to have a specific plan. He got his first one done with the Jefferson site, which requires them to enclose various things and get something done now. It's the first time that this has been done in the city of Los Angeles similar to what we're doing in the L.A. County. Excellent. Well, all of these slides will be available online anytime. No copyright intended. What can we do? There's a whole bunch of best practices that can be done right now. From the L.A. County Inglewood field, we've been doing a lot. We are upgrading the community standards district with new technology. Okay, um, main thing is who's going to pick? Next slide. 
Did I do it? Next one. Okay. Get informed. Have actions and do a lot of calling. And, and let's say start next Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow's too early, but next Wednesday will be fine after the Easter holiday. <laughs> next one. This is the Jefferson site. And the city oil and gas administrator has issued a specific plan for this. These are apartments. You think you have a bad. Here's an apartment, here's an apartment. They have a second floor, and you can watch all of the drilling going on at the same time. 60 feet away from your window. That's all. Oh, you need to. oh, here's one. If you ever get on Pico, uh, stop near Genesee, and then there's a 130 foot high building there, are no windows. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what? The Fairfax district over here got the driller to fully enclose the whole thing. God help you if you're inside if there's a big blow up. And oh, by the way, th this is the gas processing facility <laughs> next to the neighbor. That's all. That's all. Well, I think that we just are getting a, a, a warm-up. We're going to have to do another evening because there's just so much information to get through. But given that and keeping that in mind. Say, information is one thing. Action is where it's at. So that's where we're going. All of this information is to get us to be taking some actions. So questions for, uh, for Tom back. Um, I would just say the speaker mentioned this was LA City, LA City, but um, Marina is LA County, which is in Harbor, and LA City and LA County don't cooperate. So I'm wondering how much of this is applicable um, for LA. I mean, it sounds like LA City is doing something, but um, what is LA County doing? Okay, anyone else? Yes, I have a question for Dr. Williams, right? Yeah. Um, was, was you referring to uh, the City of Commerce, which has uh, per, the, the city of Commerce has very little in the way of housing, um, and a lot of the houses over there have been bought up, and they have small wells. And I was, if, if you were referring to uh, benzene and uh, other uh, petrochemicals uh, found in uh, the water in that area. It's adjacent to the city of LA. Yeah. Uh, what kind of techniques are we using here for oil and gas drilling? Mm. Here in the uh, marina. And in the oil fields, for that matter. In the PDR operations. Right now, one of the... What? Just a second. Yeah. Uh, what's the cost of closing the, uh, the stem? Sorry? What's the cost of closing the stem? Not Anyone else? Yeah, can um, Tom compare this the situation we have here to what's happening in Port the Ranch? Okay. Over here. Is there a map of all the wells here in LA? And is anybody reporting about this and talking about it in the media? Okay. All right. So what did find the monitoring data on 
on what will helium, so helium monitoring. Okay, you stay close. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, who asked that question? You asked for the monitoring yeah, on they helium? They were monitoring the uh, helium levels on the natural gas they were purchasing when they put it down into the storage facility. No, it just happens to be there. So when it started leaking out, SoCal said it doesn't have helium in it, it's not our gas, but however, in our litigation with them, they had to then admit, and it's all on record, that just because you don't find helium doesn't mean it's not our gas. On the other hand, when you do find helium, odds are pretty good, and a lot of the documents that I have, their engineers were saying, for instance, Troxel, which is their northernmost monitoring well, they were getting readings of helium up there, which means it's migrating beyond that area, it which will, is, uh, who me, knows uh, how far. Patricia, my question is, how do you determine uh, the source of the helium? Because there, there, there's natural no, gas from Texas is probably going to have helium. Helium, yes, that's why it's that's in there. Right. And that's why when you find it, you got to figure it's coming from the reservoir. It's part of their gases. The oil field itself produces gas. And it co-mingles, co well it also has BTEX, because this happens to be a field that's rich with benzene and, and other bad actors. And they all, and methane acts as a carrier gas that drives it all and pulls it up with it. But all of the native gases that are in there, they don't have an actual native sector <coughs> because no one did isotopic analysis or analysis to determine exactly what that native gas is. Everything that's in there is co-mingled with the gases they're injecting. Yeah, so, once it goes but, in, so they're not so the helium they're putting in there that you don't have a way to say that it's from that. It could be from. Well, who cares if it's from Oklahoma or Texas? The point being, it was piped in and injected into this uh, formation, and so when you find it, odds are this is their gas leaking out of their reservoir, which is a contention that they have denied forever. And certainly with the, the Dogger shutdown in 2010, I mean, it was, don't take any of their documents' words for it either. The fact that Dogger shut them down was because of reservoir gas leakage. Given, given it's helium, I, uh, I think that would be I would that, there Excuse is me. A, a technical. We have with that, that, we got to continue. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to turn this next question over to Tom. Tom, there was a question about LA City and LA County. What is LA County doing in all of this? In between these two, we have an opportunity to act. Because for 10 years, I've been going, I might say, once a month, once a quarter, to the LA County meeting for the Citizens Advisory Panel, the CAP, for the Community Standards District, regulating the production of oil and gas from the Inglewood oil field in the county of Los Angeles. It's been there, it's been operating, it's a model to use for the city of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. In the same way that if the city of Los Angeles has a specific plan for the Lincoln, for the uh, Jefferson site, in the same way we're taking things that are found out there and putting them in the update of the Community Standards District for the County of Los Angeles. We have an opportunity right now that the two organizations are actually trying to help each other and the Oil and Gas Administrator often is meeting with the CAP in uh, Han Park. So there is an opportunity right now for the next couple of years where you actually have the county stuff supporting the city stuff and the city stuff providing more active participation by the county in regulating the Inglewood oil field and guess what? The Elysio Canyon. It's in the county. It's not in the city. <clears throat> but CD12 recently had a forum of all the candidates for CD12 election to the city council and all of them shut it down. Maybe we can expand that to shut them down. <laughs> the official was on March 25th, 1956. Was there a blowout of number 10? Do you know? 
In 1956, I probably have the records, but I would have to look, because I have all the well records for, and that's a dog or map. Somebody asked about maps. Do we have any maps for all of LA? Yes, there are maps. They, they can find them into sections, uh, or they print them out in sections, and that happens to be Dogger Map 120, which is the uh, Playa del Rey field. Um, so for that, and someone also asked while I'm thinking about it, um, what would it cost to shut it down? I happen to have two studies, because in 1993, we got the news on them at the time, Channel 2 Action News, and we were showing a lot of the things that we're showing now. And SoCal Gas, uh, put out an abandonment, which was one of my slides actually, a uh, study to determine what it would cost for them to demolish and abandon the area. Um, I have two reports from them. So it's a doable <coughs> thing. They put it out in a heartbeat and they can do it again. How much to tell you exactly how much it was, I'd have to look at the report. I, on my slides, I just put the cover page and the fact that, you know, they've done it. They did it under pressure. Um, and, and yes, with uh, Tom's work in Culver City, and we've been a part of that also, grassroots for years and years, working with those CAP meetings and, and working with the, the county, which was, what's his name? Who's the supervisor there? Uh, MRT? Yeah, MRT, yeah. yes. Uh, right. <laughs> the City of Commerce in your talk, and are there chemicals in the water there? Uh, I don't know the city of commerce. I was talking about the Inglewood oil field and the many oil fields within the city of Los Angeles only. However, there are oil fields outside of the city of Los Angeles, and I say the county has only dealt with the Inglewood oil field. It's just just a matter of time until like the CPUC did with the Montebello gas storage facility when they had blowouts there. 15 blowouts required gas company to buy the houses. So they had 15 bad wells. And it was an economic decision on their part. Did they influence the groundwater? Nobody really cared about the groundwater because it was $5 million that CPUC got back from the gas company for, uh, my say, illegally <laughs> using tax and uh, ratepayers funds for their own use. And one of the issues there is that they were able to stop the use of the field, but the field is still there and the gas company still owns it yeah. and they're waiting <laughs> Till everybody forgets. Yeah, which happens quickly. Patricia, is, do you know if the gas that's being pumped into Playa uh, Del Rey is a product of fracking uh, um, with those chemicals? Um, no. Uh, fracking typically, I mean, the, the, the difference between an oil field when they're going in and trying to frack and get out more of the, uh, the gases and stuff, at, at uh, the Playa Del Rey field, which I keep thinking the image is up there. <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, they injected into an oil field to store it there. I mean, there's approximately 70% of the oil remaining in there, but as Tom showed you, these other operations that they used to recover it, they didn't do there and instead injected the gas into the field because it wasn't cost effective to remove the remaining 70%, at least back in the 40s. So. Um, which leads one to wonder, would they try once you start removing the gas if they shut down? And I don't think that's likely. There are too many other things going on here. But, um, and it would also take 10, 20 years, just like Montebello, to shut down those operations. And SoCal has to monitor this for all those pressure differentials acting on all those old wells that they know are there and, and could leak at any given moment. Tom, uh, what techniques are being used in the Playa del Rey operations? In the Playa del Rey operations, it, it, basically they have stopped all oil gas, yeah. all oil production. Well, However, they use wells in the Playa del Rey to extract water when they're injecting gas and to pump water in when they're withdrawing gas. Because putting water in pushes the gas. 
Gas is always above the water level. So if you inject water into the field, it pushes the gas out through the wells faster. And for any storage facility, the issue is how fast can you get a million cubic meters of gas into the well and how fast you can get it out. And that was one of their problems in the Elysio Canyon. They took out all of the shutoff valves down at the bottom of the well between the field and the casing and they were doing what is called casing flow rather than tubing flow. Oh, right. CPUC told them that they have to use tubing flow, but nobody uses tubing <laughs> flow. It's just too inconvenient, etc. And you can get more gas in and more gas out with casing flow and you use water from any well you can get to inject a load of the gas in order to force the gas out even faster. Which there is oil that they do bring up and they bring up 2,500 barrels a day of water from here. So subsidence is also an issue. Um, and this field, we've shown how it's moving up and down um, with the, uh, the monitoring that we got garnered through our lawsuit, uh, subsidence monitoring from satellite. But um, you said uh, with regard to the, um, God, now I'm going to forget what I was wanting to say, because you said something about the gas injection. Go on to the next one, I'll think of it. I, uh, okay, so there five to ten years ago, Delray 10 abandonment. What did they do at that time? Is that Del correct? That wasn't, it wasn't ten years ago. This is Delray 10, which is right next to it. And as Tom was bringing up, you think we got a bed. Well, we do have a bed. All these wells are up right underneath these people's homes. And all of these from here have been leaking. There was a Prop 65 lawsuit that showed um, roughly ten years ago. But it showed, and that had to be within a year or two, of soil and, and groundwater contamination through a lot of the wells, and they're all marked as yellow on my map over there. But Delray 10 is right next to it, and this was at the time of our settlement agreement that, and part of the shutdown operations there, because they knew they had reservoir gas leakage, and they abandoned that well. But the thing is, is, and Tom drew up diagram after diagram to say this is how you go in and test the groundwaters, which they were supposed to do, and testing in the groundwaters what we want to see where these gases are migrating, how they're migrating, they refuse to do. And now that it is abandoned, Think they're looking at it anymore? No, and we need soil gas testing there. We need to, to make them test these areas because they leak and they leak again. <coughs> they did some things about seven years ago there. That's what I was asking. Was that an abandonment? They did something about Oh, yeah, they abandoned it. Yeah, it was a, less than 10 years ago. I lose track of time. But yes, it was at the end of our settlement agreement. And we, well, actually, a few years later because we fought what they were doing because we wanted further testing done. And they just decided, well, no, we're going to do this. Could you give us a clarification in terms of the escaping gases, the VTEX gases? Because uh, it, it seems to me that the gas company is saying, well, they just evaporated into the air. And, but these, these gases, uh, could you do a clarification well, on that? Well, number one, it's like when RGC blew, and they didn't have any, and as Tom said, why don't they have video monitoring when they're out there? They know these things are going to blow. There's like 20 PSI. Anytime a consultant goes out here, they'll get a geyser. They get geysers all the time, so they should have been expecting this. But when it comes to the BTEX, they do volatize and they do go away with the air, and certainly we have the beach air blowing them away. So, but that doesn't mean that they're not there of the moment. That doesn't mean that they're not there in the first 20 minutes. Um, we have hydrogen sulfide at levels that can cause brain damage, all kinds of bad things that they've found in geysers that happen in here. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if there wasn't hydrogen sulfide in RGC-10 when it blew. But when they come back and test, typically, it's like the next day. And they'll bring in their monitors and you don't find it in the air. Well, it doesn't mean it wasn't there. And all, when, when, when this place had a condensate blow, all this oily condensate blew all the way across Lincoln Boulevard, all through these neighborhoods. And SoCal Gas went in and painted the homes, washed the cars, told them it was okay. 
It wasn't okay. I was in it. I was. I had a sore throat. It was. It was awful stuff that we were in. It's not okay, but it does dissipate. Two elements on that. Number one, the state of California Air Resources Board is going to do a detailed three-month, four-month air monitoring of the Inglewood oil field. One of the elements would be to get enough information and to get people to call 1-800-CUT-SMOG. You smell something? Call them. Because that puts it into a state file as to a complaint for odor. Yeah. But and you do have to have a lot that of it call. is one of the reasons why the Inglewood oil field will be the subject to a four month detailed air quality monitoring. So that's what we're looking at. Also, VTEX, it may dissipate, but it's not like methane. Methane mm. generally will go straight up if it's in concentrated form. Can you repeat that? Well, 1 800 what? Small. 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 Well, kind of roll along the ground because yeah. it's a heavy gas. Yeah. It's not a light gas. Mm. Can we do a comparison uh, between here and Porter Ranch? They got more money than you do. Uh, and more people, they had, the gas company had to relocate for up to six months, people, the entire family, out. Did they document it? No. There is only three samples of the gas that came out of that blowout well that were in the AQMD data file. Because Gas company basically told everybody, you touch that gas column and if it ignites, the rest of the damage is your problem. So by use of their influence, they were able to keep it quiet. Nobody knows the composition of the gas going out except for three samples, one of which required that the sampler take a sample and a Explosive atmosphere. Oh, yeah. Because the sample came back as it exceeded the explosive, lower explosive limit of methane. And for the LA County Fire Department to send a contractor into and collect a sample without knowing what the hell they were doing is a problem. Uh, Patricia, is there an operation here? The, um, the what is the captain? Mercaptin operation. Um, they, they put mercaptins into the gas stream when they send it out to homes. It's not something that is injected down into the formation to begin with. So it doesn't you, come from Texas. Right. Yeah. Oh, but they also, it, I mean, it's always interesting because they have found it in gas samples even around the Fly Vista area um, because they, it's a tetrahydrothiophane. And I've got emails with them saying we found. Uh, not tetrahydrothiophane, but another kind of mercaptan, and they're asking about SoCal gas using that. So, um, yeah, they are at it, and by the way, they are carcinogenic, so it's not good when your thing's going off in your stove and uh, you're smelling that stuff. So don't inhale. Um, yeah. Contrary to what they tell you. The January blowout RDC 10 was overpressurization a cost? You, is the thing a is, is overpressurization, is it a cost? Wait, tell me, tell me, SoCal Gas, tell me that it's not. Dogger was supposed to do, they required a root cause analysis of that thing. So to do a prudent root cause analysis, they should be going and looking down into the aquifer. We should be knowing what are the gases that are moving up into this area. Why are you allowing SoCal Gas to tell you this is too onerous to answer you? Where is the CPUC in helping us get these answers? And the difference with Porter Ranch is also people used Facebook. They used, you know, connections that way, and they were very vocal. And even during our litigation, we had help from the CPUC in having meetings, which got people because we advertised it more. But you need people. And any agency, be it the city, the county, when you get people that are saying, hey, my nose is bleeding, or my throat was raw, blah, blah, blah. I'm people said they were sick. They didn't have to move them. They were taking tests saying, there's nothing, there's nothing. But they moved them out because 
people complain, they didn't believe it, and that's what you need. You need to have people saying, I don't trust you, I don't, and boy, we have reason not to trust them when you see all the lies that they say. So, you need people. You need people to say, stand up. Stand up to all of this. And, and uh, okay, we just have a couple more to get through quickly. Scatter good uh, when it's in remission. Uh, does the lease cease and will, uh, what will happen, does the SoCal gas lease cease here and... No, it's an what? ongoing uh, conditional use permit. And that's what I'm saying, that they violated their conditional use permit. And I know I was here with Bonin, was here last time, he did, and I've talked to his staff, they don't know about it, I don't know that they even have it, but I am now turning to the lands attorney with the city of LA asking them why are you not enforcing this conditional use permit <coughs> you know it's pretty clear that if you've got gases surfacing um, that they're they can shut them down so that's step one and step two is to deal with the CPUC and other entities but um, but no they, they can keep yeah. going but one thing remember you now have an LA city oil and gas administrator who has demonstrated about a month ago to shut down one oil production pad and they're severely constraining containing another one. And I will say I did get an email back from the city attorney saying this is a very serious issue that, you know, can we get more information on it? So I, you know, turned around the email to me the next day, so I was pleased with that. So we'll see. So but there, we need people. So there was a question about cease and CS anything we could do, and I was thinking of the CCST. So the call, uh, the call for uh, cost benefit, yeah. the risk analysis. Right. I don't know if they know about that. Um, the, it was a legislatively requested study done on underground gas storage uh, facilities. Uh, it came back that they singled out SoCal Gas Playa Del Rey as one of the or the worst in the state. Um, it has they acknowledged the loss of containment issues. Um, my mentor, Dr. Endress, and other uh, petroleum engineers were uh, in some of the research papers that they reviewed for that. Um, the data that I just showed you is a whole lot more than what was in those reports that they use for the CCST. So it's time to use this data, which believe me, covers a whole room in, in my home, but it's time to use it. And it's time to go over after the gas because this stuff doesn't get better. And when you say this is a 1985 document, what does that tell you, Tom? Does it matter? Move it around. No. There you go. I have just one more question in the back. Thank you. Um, speaking of groundwater, so the um, uh, red, Marina Del Rey 10 oil well site, the hotel site, they're pumping groundwater out of that same site into an open tank and when really? the kids go and spills onto the street. I don't know, personally don't understand how they can separate the groundwater coming from the site where the oil was leaking and not be filtering that water. Good question. Good question. Who's yeah. testing it? Oh, yeah. They've got water that is coming up yes. from that site that they're pumping out. Yeah. How much of that water might be water that is coming up from even deeper that's already been contaminated with oil field yeah. chemicals? Any, any water that comes out of the ground, before they can discharge it, they have to test it. Yeah. Are they? Uh -huh. we, we need to find out. No, it's a matter. If, if you know that the Tanks. They're usually there's big tanks, there's blue or white for testing. They're blue. Yeah. What are they putting it in? The big red, like kind of a like a box car. Yeah, like a train box car. They're yeah. putting it in. Yeah. Right, and then when it's full, sorry, it um, spills out to the street and it runs into the. Uh, That's not right. I mean, she's saying that it fills up and it spills out onto the street. Um, any spillage you report to the Regional Water Quality and Control Board, or if it's within the City of Los Angeles, report it to the Bureau of Sanitation, Department of Public Works, and they can come out and fill it out. <laughs> no, great question. Um, please uh, check mark your name over here, or sign in, or give me a piece of paper with your name on it, and I'll follow up. Okay. Okay. There. Uh, just a couple. So. Big round of applause. Yeah. This is, uh, this is, uh, I think 
everyone would agree that this is the kind of information we need in order to move us forward and to be able to take action. If you make sure to look in at the handout that you had on page three, there are some action steps that you can take. So be sure to look over those. Uh, request a permit compliance review. Engage California Public Utilities Commission. Request engagement of LA City Petroleum Administrator. Etc. 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 So be sure to look at that, and those are steps that you can begin to take. I want you to be aware, if you don't know already, that Mike Bonin has been calling for the closure of SoCal Gas PDR underground gas storage operations. Another big. Uh, action that's happening in LA is Stand to LA, and this is all about the buffer between current uh, oil drills, uh, oil wells, and uh, gas fields, etc., etc., that there be a buffer of at least 2,500 feet between a well and any domicile or constructed building. So that's also something that's going on really now, and there's a lot of activity around that.